Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, I'm very excited to explore with you the Aries solar eclipse. It's a total solar eclipse occurring on April 8th, 2024. Let's dive in to the astrological energies, the galactic energies, some of the more esoteric meanings. We'll look at it from a visual, actual, like in the sky, what it will look like, where its path is, and also explore a couple galactic heritage card messages for the eclipse so that you receive the healing, the empowerment, the guidance, the inspiration you need to co-create with the highest expression of this powerful energy. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Before we dive in, I would love to invite you. I'm hosting my monthly New Moon Distant Reiki Share on the Aries Solar Eclipse. So on April 8th at 8 a.m. Hawaii time, this is 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we will be together during the maximum of the eclipse. So if you're not going to be out watching it and you want to join, please, you are more than welcome. Everybody is welcome to attend. It's a growing circle of sacred soul family. We come together. We really evoke that power of group intention. It's just, it's absolutely tremendous how powerful we are when we come together and how this has a positive effect on our individual lives and also empowering the highest timelines and the highest reality, heaven on earth for all beings as well within the collective. You can learn more in RSVP on taylornorrisreiki.com. Also on my website, you will find that I'm teaching two Reiki classes, end of March, early April, Reiki Master, Reiki 1 and 2. So if you're wanting to become certified or become certified, you know, it's not your first time, but within the Holy Fire World Peace Reiki lineage, you are more than welcome to be there. And if you're wanting to retake a course, you're more than welcome to be there. I've been guided to schedule the classes during the eclipse portal because this is a very powerful time to be immersed in the reiki energy following the eclipse portal of course we have this extraordinary transit of the jupiter uranus conjunction in taurus and i will also be teaching a class on that in this class it combines galactic astrology with reiki with a reiki journey that is specific to the astrological energy so this is part of a series of classes i've been doing i've been receiving really positive feedback and these have been such fun classes and i hope if you're curious about learning more about astrology and you resonate with Reiki healing as well, that you will join. It's open and welcome to everybody, all levels of Reiki and astrology experience. You can learn more about it on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. All right, so here is our slide on the Aries solar eclipse, the astrology chart. And before we dive into that, I want to show you what this eclipse actually is. So here we are on timeanddate.com. You can visit this website and see, you can see what this total solar eclipse really looks like near its maximum. So I'm going to play this animation here. So it begins with a partial eclipse, the moon temporarily blocking out the light of the sun. Can't see the sun. We have the totality, the maximum eclipse, and slowly, 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 the sun's light returns. Extraordinary. And looking at the path of the eclipse, you can see it here. You can see that it's crossing from the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, I'm just getting this, ooh, like Atlantean energy. Okay. 
Interesting. Interacting with the eastern coast of Canada, east coast of the United States, cutting through central United States, Texas into Mexico, and then swirling on out through the Pacific Ocean, invoking more of that Lemurian consciousness. So what a tremendous wave here. This animation here shows the shadow path of the eclipse. So very, very interesting here. And this website has some really awesome information. You can see exactly the timing. So you can see the maximum eclipse will be visible universal time, April 8th, 1800 hours, 17 minutes, or East Coast United States time, Eastern time, 2.17 p.m. This is 8.17 a.m. Hawaii time when we'll be in that distant Reiki share. And you can also look down here and see exactly which countries will be able to see the eclipse and the extent to which they will be able to see the eclipse. So really fun website to come and nerd out on what they're calling the Great American Eclipse. Okay, so diving in to the astrological chart, we see here in the upper left-hand corner, we have the glyph of Aries. For those of you learning the signs and the glyphs and the symbols, this is Aries, the ram for the zodiac sign of Aries. And we see here also the glyph of Mars. So the sign of Aries is ruled by the planet Mars, the divine masculine motivation, willpower, our force, our strength, our sense of ego, I am. And really this, this drive that propels us through life. You can look in your chart for where is 19 degrees of Aries in 24 minutes. And this will be the house position where this eclipse is occurring in your chart. And by knowing the house position, you will have a greater understanding of what area of your life is undergoing this new beginning, this transformation, this portal of quantum influx, wave information, transmutation, alchemization, profound shifts. And as it is a solar eclipse, this is like a big new moon, and it is occurring in the sign of Aries where the north node of the moon is. And the north node of the moon has to do with our new beginnings, new territory, where we are going, entering and pioneering into new frequencies, new levels and explorations of Aries energy for our collective soul growth. So it has this double edge of the new, fresh start, new beginning kind of energy here. And as it's a total solar eclipse, this makes it extremely powerful. There's a third echo of this newness in that the eclipse is happening in the sign of Aries, which is the first sign of of the zodiac wheel so we have three different layers of that new frequency energy here what's really interesting too if you look in this chart it's a bunch of planets all bunched up in pisces and aries and we can see the beginning of this bunch because the astrological wheel goes in a counterclockwise direction for all the planets except when they're in retrograde and the nodes of the moon actually move in a clockwise direction they move opposite so looking at the beginning of this bunch we see mars the ruler of the eclipse in pisces starting this bunch so there's a deep drive and mars is in pisces so it's this deep spiritual drive, spiritualization drive. We're going to look at the galactic alignments of Mars and Saturn because they're remarkable. They correlate and they're in this exchange with the 
Libra lunar eclipse we just had where Venus was actually at these degree points and bringing in these galactic frequencies. And Venus was the ruler of the Libra lunar eclipse interacting with this galactic energy of Eridanus. And now Mars and Saturn are hovering around this degree point interacting with Eridanus constellation and Mars ruling this airy solar eclipse. So very, very strong connected energy here. And this bunch of planets we have in order, Mars, Saturn, Neptune, all in Pisces, Venus, the north node of the moon, the sun, the moon, Chiron, and Mercury, all in Aries. And this little bunch, this stellium of planets that are all roughly conjunct and points and luminaries ends with this Mercury retrograde, whereas Mars is like fast driving, it's driving forward, it's, it likes to drive forward in one direction. And Pisces, this is not usually possible because Pisces is a mutable sign, it's a more scattering energy, it's like, oh... But the higher octave of Pisces is the unity, the oneness, the wholeness. So it, it can have that sense of the, the drive for wholeness here, motivating Mars, fueling this eclipse, and then ending here, this stellium with Mercury, retrograde Mercury, normally our fastest planet, right? It has the closest orbit to the sun. It's zipping around, but this Mercury will have stationed retrograde on April 1st, I have this handy table down here, bottom left-hand corner of the slide. April 1st, Mercury stations retrograde at 27 degrees, 13 minutes of the sign of Aries. So on April 8th, at the time of the eclipse, Mercury will have already been retrograde for about a week and move back to 24 degrees and 48 minutes of Aries. So this is not a fast Mercury. This is a reflective, contemplative Mercury that's actually going to go back and meet up with Chiron a couple more times. So there's this energy here of a mental transformation, mental recalibration, reflection, inward process, real like deconditioning about any kind of limitations we have about what is actually possible, what is actually achievable, and limited beliefs about self as this is occurring in the sign of Aries. So a real healing of beliefs that lead us to believe that, you know, we're not worth existing, we don't have inherent self-worth, these stories, any kind of stories we're telling ourselves that are fear-based, this could be a lower expression of Aries, fear-based, scarcity-based, you know, even more violent, aggressive, defensive, traumatized, like the abused parts of us really undergoing this mental alchemy process and as we reflect and recalibrate and press delete and press delete in a way that those belief systems and those thoughts and thought forms and attitudes and mental processes and mental loops are deleted and healed into the light, however that healing work looks for you and healed and cleared and released like for good from your individual consciousness and from the collective consciousness as well, that this is really part of the healing work of this Aries solar eclipse here. As this is a stellium of planets all occurring in one or two houses in your chart, these will be the life areas that are really requiring that radical, profound, and total transformation of your belief systems so that this high octane, high powered, supercharged Mars is able to drive and act and bring into reality 
those higher hopes and dreams that come from your soul and spirit consciousness stemming and deeply rooted from an inner sense of authority as Mars is conjunct the planet Saturn. This is also, I know I will be doing this, we will be doing this together, the Distant Reiki Share, really wonderful day to hold the intention of inner peace, peace on earth, and peace within the cosmos and within all of creations. Because sometimes Mars, Saturn kind of can have a bad reputation for different things happening on the world stage, hard aspects between Mars and Saturn here. And then since this is such a powerful Mars ruled total airy solar eclipse, those sometimes can bring about those lower frequencies of war and separation and battle and violence and these kinds of things. Mars is the god of war. So really, you know, if you can find that inner peace within and empower that inner peace within, do not underestimate the power of that. And if you're on your own doing that, great. If you're able to come together with a group, this can be a group of you and another person, you and your your dog, your cat, you out in nature, somewhere beautiful, you with a small group of people in person, online, etc. Holding this frequency of peace, very, very powerful and helpful for the collective. Above all, I really see this eclipse as an opportunity to heal and it's healing self. And again, it's not underestimating. So do not underestimate the power of choosing to heal yourself. This is Aries. This is I am. This is the new moon, this eclipse in Aries conjunct Chiron, taking this time to be for you and about you for your healing for your highest good, for your cultivation of your own inner strength so that you are the pure agent of pure consciousness of creation, of upliftment and joy and happiness and sending those ripples of love in your authentic way, which is unique to you and special to you and only you can be you. The sun is exalted in the sign of Aries. Only you can be you. And it's not about trying to be like somebody else or anybody else. It's you. It's your unique, authentic soul song, heart song, heart radiance, heart field. It's, it's about you. So healing at that deeper level, letting go of anything that is obscuring your own light from you is very much supported here. Also with this artwork, I felt very inspired. Like this is, this eclipse has this energy of what is called in Reiki through the distant symbol. Some of you will know what this is. The origin of all is pure consciousness. And that's what I was working to capture here in this energy. This eclipse has a resonance with that, with that bridge of light into transcendence, with that core frequency of like when it all started, what that experience is like, what that feels like. The origin of all is pure consciousness and waking up that awareness of the origin of all is pure consciousness contained within you, contained within your heart, contained within every cell of your body, every proton in every molecule, every atom of your being at the smallest, tiniest level, the origin of all is pure consciousness, is contained within you at that microcosmic scale to the much grander universal, multiversal, galactic, cosmic, cosmological, creational scales as well. 
So welcoming in this energy and this radiance for you and embodying your connection to it all and radically letting go of anything that is hiding that awareness and that experience from you because it doesn't serve you anymore. It doesn't serve the collective anymore. And we can let that go and be stronger and clearer channels of pure consciousness together, co-creating a better reality together that helps not only ourselves, Aries, but uplifts the collective as well, which is what this Pluto in Aquarius is on a mission to help us all achieve. I'm noticing here Pluto in Aquarius is making a sextile 60 degree harmonious aspect to Venus in Aries. And so this can be new, powerful relationship beginnings, powerful relational alchemical processes connecting you, Venus and Aries with you know, your own sense of values and the right groups where you feel at home, like you feel like you're doing the transformative work together. You feel like you can be your authentic self, holy Venus and Aries. So this is a powerful relationship dynamic that is occurring here that is supportive. And this can be kind of nice after that Venus ruled Libra lunar eclipse, which has this resonance with the relationship changes. There may be more relational changes occurring around this time, but there also may be a sense of smoothing some of those relationship changes out. And things just get even more interesting when we look at the Sabian symbol of 20 degrees Aries. So this is a young girl feeding birds in winter overcoming crises through compassion. Nature's seasonal rhythms imply an oscillation between living and dying. Through creative imagination, men can fly over the cycle and discover means not only to escape from the fatality of seasonal decay or deprivation, but to assist other living entities to survive through crises. Migrating birds fly south, but by establishing a partnership with other creatures, unable to escape wintry deprivation or death, man can maintain the life of the spirit symbolized by birds, steady through all crises if, like a young girl, he is widely open to the promptings of love and sympathy. At this fifth stage of the symbolic sequence, we witness human activity motivated by sympathy overcoming the seasonal phase of impotency. Life potency in nature spirits reaches a higher level in the human being. The theme is the transmutation of life into love. This interpretation comes from astrologer and philosopher, pure genius, Dane Rudger, mindfire.ca. And I think this has a lovely energy to layer upon our exploration of the airy solar eclipse. So this transmutation of life into love and the awareness that all life is made of the same love that is the origin of all this pure consciousness is the power of love. This symbol too also is an invitation, I believe, to connect with our inner child, our imagination, the wishes and dreams and hopes of our child, and to have compassion for that child and radically, again, let go of anything that is keeping that child feeling unsafe from expressing their dreams in this reality at this time on earth, because look at all the support Look at all the birds. These are the blessings, the gifts, the talents, the good fortune, the non-physical guides. This is also an invitation to connect with the divine animal kingdom, the galactic animal kingdom, and to open your psychic senses as well. The birds really are evoking this sense of listening, listening to the songs, 
listening to the messages and when you can't even, you know, find your gratitude for other things, giving giving thanks to the birds, giving thanks to nature, giving thanks to creation and the ability to hear maybe with your clear audience or your other clear senses the messages from the non-physical realms because there are a lot <laughs> that are coming in and there will be more especially as Jupiter moves into Gemini and to give thanks don't forget to give thanks to your guides and to ask them to help you and to understand that they are there they're waiting for you to ask and to be open to receive their help they're always there with you guiding you and supporting you and this is something I always like to do with Reiki energy is send Reiki energy to my guides to send love and compassion and gratitude to my guides to the source of Reiki and to these beings these benevolent beings of the light the enlightened beings who are helping us at these critical junctures in our evolution that we are the human counterparts of this evolutionary process and we have as much if not even more non-physical support that we're you know all beginning to perceive more and more depending on where you are on your spiritual journey but opening yourself up to perceive more of the support that is there that is cheering for us as we remember and awaken and co-create heaven on earth and this new earth this ascended earth unlocking our inner technology as human beings and all the magic and the miracles contained within each of us this is the galactic chart for the total solar eclipse in aries created on galacticastrochart.com where you can create a chart like this for different events, different transits, as well as your own natal birth chart. And this shows all the planets and the points in the chart with their conjunct and opposite alignments to various constellations and stars within those constellations. You can see the sun and the moon, as well as Chiron, all in conjunct alignment to Tau Ceti star. It's this blue star here. I've marked it as a blue star. It may not actually be a blue star. It's not It's not actually a five-pointed blue star. <laughs> Full transparency. But this is the general area in the belly of Cetus the whale here, this constellation Cetus, the sea monster, the land, the planet, the region of the cosmos where there are the flying whale beings there one of their origin points one of their hot spots here and this is an energy that is very very deep very magical very potent very unconscious collective unconscious dream time you know what is below the awareness of the psyche and i have this image here of the iceberg with what we can see above the surface of the water this is the quintessential psychological energy for understanding the conscious mind that which we can see above the surface of the water and then the unconscious mind or the collective unconscious that which is below the surface of the water that is imperceivable and that is much larger than this tiny little bit that we can perceive above the surface of the water which is the conscious mind so cetus to me deals directly with this unconscious and really with mercury retrograde as well reprogramming this collective unconscious what do you want to be there what do you want to be there that's driving your actions your behaviors that's creating your reality this is the reprogramming. You can reprogram it in so many different ways, right? Hypnotic regressions and hypnoses and listening to guided meditations. There are so many techniques, you know, many that I don't know about and can't name right now. But one of the things I do to help with this process is 
before I go to bed, I activate all my Reiki symbols and I always go to bed listening to a channeled Reiki journey of some variety or a Reiki invocation turned down to the lowest volume. It only has like one, one bar of volume on it. So I can barely hear it, but the sound waves are still oscillating. I don't mute it and I play it and I, I listen to that as I go to sleep every night. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I will restart it again and listen to something like that so that those frequencies are suffusing my space where I sleep. They're suffusing and penetrating into that that opening of our conscious mind as it dissolves into more of the collective unconscious and the unconscious mind as we fall asleep and relax into that that state where we're even more merged with our light body and we're perceiving reality through our dreamscapes and the mystery realms, the astral realms, the different places we may go in our dreams here. So this is a real invitation. If you're not already doing some kind of practice working with your unconscious, this is a powerful moment to start one, to definitely start one, to be listening to your dreams, paying attention to your dreams and knowing that a lot is being processed through the dream state, through the unconscious, the collective unconscious, also becoming aware in your day-to-day -day reality when you're feeling heaviness or thought forms or beliefs or ideas or emotions or feelings, questioning if it's yours or not. As we looked at that astrology chart of this eclipse with so many planets still in Pisces, right? Mars, Saturn, Neptune, there can be this, ooh, you know, like I have no boundaries. Where do I end and you begin? And And this can be really fun when you're in a guided meditation or something. But when you're going about your daily reality, this is a lot to hold as an empath. So checking in. Am I feeling this way because this is really something that's coming from my life? Or am I tapped into that collective unconscious frequency of, you know, sadness or depression or grief or fear or whatever it may be? Checking yourself like that. What's my frequency? What am I tuned into right now? And engaging in any practice that helps you shift higher because that's what the nodes are asking us inviting us to with alpharet star and andromeda to access our freedom to access our adventure our sovereignty our awakened mind our sense of all caps off like everything is possible i'm gonna fly free here this is a star in the head of andromeda so that crown chakra reprogramming that mental reprogramming and it's also part of pegasus constellation pegasus the horse associated with the speed and the freedom the flying horse the only thing faster than a horse to the ancients possibly you know in one way of looking at certain ancient cultures you know, the the horse was really, really fast compared to the walking or the running human being, but the flying horse, now that's what we're talking about, really fast, really speedy here. So allowing things to connect for you speedy, and this can, this can happen in an inward way and a mental way, you know, mental things clicking for you more rapidly. And also this can be in your, your power center to alpha rots in the power center, the solar plexus, the navel of Pegasus constellation. Mercury is aligned to opposite Spica star in Virgo and Arcturus star in Boots constellation. And this is a remembering Mercury retrograde of your unique gifts and talents, Spica. Spica is linked to being gifted, being talented. People with strong alignments to Spica are super gifted and talented in certain ways. And we all have gifts and talents. So some of those could be coming into greater awareness. There could be a greater valuation of those gifts and talents. Like really understanding something that others maybe perceive from you like naturally like obviously 
you know, you're good at X, Y, Z, or obviously you're artistic or obviously you're creative. And maybe you don't see that about yourself. You don't fully value that about yourself because it's easy for you. It's natural. It is just your way of being. So starting to understand and become more aware of certain of your gifts and talents here and be committed to this path of spiritual awakening, awareness, forging a new path, a better path ahead, doing things a different way, using your unique gifts and talents. What is your authentic life path here with your unique gifts and talents, having the courage to go forward in those ways with your unique gifts and talents and that awareness that you got this, you've got this, letting go of any beliefs that you don't got this because you do and that new path that you're going to lead is absolutely required and supported at this time. Venus opposite supergalactic center along with Neptune opposite supergalactic center is still talking about ancestral healing, human ancestral healing, galactic ancestral healing. This is one of the things I do in every single galactic astrology soul reading. First reading I do is a galactic ancestry Reiki journey. I also offer this as a separate session, but this is a time where you can you can connect with your galactic ancestors and they can help you heal with your within your human lineage and also connect with you and help you bring in more of your gifts and talents connected to your galactic soul connections, more of your multidimensional self and really working on that self-worth, that self-value with Venus and working within the paradigms of your creativity and within the area of your relationships as well. Mars and Saturn conjunct Atronar Star and Eridanus. We'll be diving into that in the next slide. Neptune with Skiat Star in Pegasus. This is like the psychic vision and the prophecy and the intellect and logic and reason and downloads and the crown chakra completely open and empowered and awake here. So again, this is great for higher guidance, but it can also be like, what frequency are you tuned into? And make sure you're tuning in where you want to be tuned into. Pluto still with Altair Star and Aquila constellation, the eagle rising above, rising above, seeing that higher perspective. And I'm seeing here too that the Venus, Neptune, and Lilith all with super galactic centers. So there's another dose of healing any kind of feminine wounding, feminine rage that stems from a an ancestral inheritance that there can be anger, there can be residues here from the ancestry deep traumas, feeling suppressed, feeling like you don't have a place, you know, maybe even within your lineage, holding on to anger. And this is also with the super galactic center I'm seeing, you know, we're having this radical transformation of the mental body. This is a radical transformation of who we are, where we come from, what we're capable of, our equality, our rights, our sovereignty, our will to exist, our divine birthright of our existence, and our ability and capacity to take up all the space, all the glory, all the power of our pure soul consciousness too. A lot of times seeing you can another way of looking at the collective unconscious or your unconscious mind, subconscious mind is the soul consciousness. So this can be a radical awakening here with all this Tau Seti energy of full soul consciousness and full soul consciousness streaming through powerfully in the super galactic center as well. About our origins about our connections, and about our soul family. Okay, so you can see in this chart here, Mars and Saturn, I have them circled for the astrological newbies tuning in here. In the sign of Pisces, conjunct Atronar star. You can see it in these, these little 
screenshots here of the galactic chart. Conjunct Aternar star and Eridanus constellation. Eridanus constellation, the river. And like I said, at the time of the Venus ruled Libra lunar eclipse, March 24th, 25th, 2024, that we just had, Venus, the chart ruler, the eclipse ruler, was conjunct this star. And now we have Mars, the eclipse ruler of this Aries solar eclipse, conjunct the same star. So it's like this eclipse portal is ruled in a way by this Atronar star in Eridanus constellation. This is profound. This is the mouth of the river of life, the river of life, the river of peace, and the starry river of life that I imagine as kind of in between the realms separating you know, the first heaven of consciousness to the third heaven of consciousness, the higher heavens of consciousness, even like the, you know, the 3D to the 5D and higher would be another way you could possibly look at this river of life. And this river of life really inviting us into the peace frequency, holding the peace frequency, I think really, really strongly. And you can say, oh, but there are wars and this and that. You can hold the inner peace frequency. And again, do not underestimate the power of holding the inner peace frequency. This star is connected to rapid changes. And what I am really feeling, this is about, this clicked for me a couple of days ago. I was in a class. We were talking about the shift from the light warrior, which many of us, know and connect with and have a, you know, embodied sense of that through various, you know, maybe alignments in our chart or different memories of past lives we've had as spiritual warriors, different ways of being like, got to go in like, I know I've done this. <laughs> I'm going to go in and I'm going to save the day. I'm going to dominate the my frequency. <laughs> used to use Reiki this way. This is embarrassing, but I'm going to say it. I know other people can relate to this, but, you know, going into a situation like my Reiki is so strong, it's going to dominate the field and like, you know, envelop everything in the light. And yes, that's what Reiki or these higher source energies can do for us is envelop everything in the light and train everything in the light. But there's, you know, this sense of like pushing it you know, in this like battle kind of way that's different rather than you just show up, invite the light, the light is there, it can illuminate the darkness. And there's no like battle or I'm against you or like the good and evil duality, polarity kind of situation there. Fear versus love. I'm going to like conquer you with my love <laughs> right this is reminding me to those of you who might know about the black league resistance fighters within orion constellation and orion civilization where there were these forces for good you know you can think of the jedi and the samurai and these light workers who were you know wielding their power and like fighting the forces of darkness here this is like the quintessential spiritual warrior energy that is being alchemized more into the light bringer and i visualize this very strongly with this the the frequency of Eridanus, much like the elves within Lord of the Rings, Galandriel, like these beautiful beings of the light, and that light of Arendel that she gives to Frodo. And on the picture here, you know, it has this quote, and I wish I was a voice actress and could do the voice, but I give you the light of Arendel, our most beloved star. May it be a light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. And this is the light, and it's a light of a star. And it's almost as if Mars, the warrior here, is, because Mars is going to conjunct Saturn, 
and past Saturn and keep going because Mars travels faster. Mars in its orbit goes around the sun faster. It's closer in planet than Saturn. It's almost like Saturn, the inner authority and like the grandmother, the elder expression of Saturn and Pisces is handing off to the young warrior, you know, regardless of gender, Mars, that divine masculine spiritual warrior inside, handing off the light of Arendelle, handing off the light of the stars and saying, here, young warrior, here is this light. Take it. You are a light bringer. Bring it with you in your journey and know that it is going to shine in even the darkest of situations. And you can see in these pictures here, these are you know, the young warriors who the hobbits with this light, wielding this light, just bringing that light here. And so I am, I'm seeing this as this handoff to the young warrior, an initiation into becoming a light bringer and a light bearer. I've included down here the interpretations from Bernadette Brady when this star is with Mars to cause or spend one's life in chaotic times. So this can be chaos on the world stage at a lower expression, to be highly focused and willing to cause change or disruption in order to achieve goals. This can be needed, temporary chaos and transformation. And I know somewhere in this mix too, right around where Mercury is here is Eris, the so-called dwarf planet, a goddess named after Eris, the goddess of discord, of chaos. So this can also be accidents, turbulent events, to be in a time of uncertainty. So a time of change, a time of messy middle, of disruption, and knowing that with that light of Aaron Dill, no matter what the change is, no matter what the chaos is, just bring the light just bring the light show up and bring the light don't have to fight the chaos necessarily just show up and bring the light and be the light let the light shine through you the light of the stars is within you everybody has a galactic astrology chart everybody has you know multiple lists of stars that are connected to you we all have starlight within us are made of starlight so this light is within you being activated and initiated at the time of this eclipse. And if you're tuning into this beforehand, this process has already been initiated and has begun. Atronar with Saturn can be a person who can be a leader in hard times or a dictator in good times, needing to learn to lead with care and create flexibility Changes occurring in authority through crisis or upheaval. So again, on the world stage, we may see changes within leadership heralded in around the time of this Aries solar eclipse and over the course of the next months. And no matter what's happening externally, bring the light. Show up and bring the light and do not underestimate how powerful and meaningful that is and what a difference it makes what a difference you make so a final couple messages here with this eclipse so i pulled two different galactic heritage cards unfinished business here with serious star beings present timelines the syrian consciousness is present and available to us the brightest star in the sky so this can even be a Syrian light transmission that is waking up within you speaking to these earlier times in the earth's history from a linear you know past perspective when the star beings were seeding consciousness upon the earth and many of us coming back to the earth with this sense of unfinished business we have to resolve certain things there's karma to heal there's different agreements contracts we're here for a reason for a mission and to find that feeling of wholeness and completeness realizing that 
you were already meant to have done it, it would already be done, to allow this to be a fresh start, to allow this to be a new beginning, to let the past go and welcome in the new, and to be disciplined about this too. This other card, self-discipline, Vega, present timeline. So the ancient vegans are masters of self-discipline. To be disciplined within the mental body, be disciplined in the way that you bring the light. And this doesn't necessarily mean you have, you know, rigorous spiritual practices every day in a certain order that you have to complete to bring the light. It can be that if that's your authentic path. This can be just activating the light anytime you're feeling triggered or chaotic or you're finding yourself in fear or you're realizing you're in a negative mental loop or you're feeling with your empathy the collective's grief etc being disciplined to be aware to let go and to shift into that higher frequency of love and choosing love for yourself and choosing love in your interactions with others and how you show up in the world. Just choosing in that moment, I am a light bringer. can be that simple. I am a light bringer, if that resonates, of course. I'm a light bringer. I'm a light bearer. I shine the light of infinite stars through my being. I shine the light of infinite stars through my being. So thank you so much for watching this video. Happy solar eclipse to you. I'd love to see you at the Reiki share on April 8th. I'm teaching Reiki 1 and 2 before this eclipse. So April 4th, 5th, if you would like to become Reiki certified or take a class within the Holy Fire lineage, you everybody is welcome to this class. It's a beginner level class and you can learn more about it on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. April 20th, I have this awesome class combining astrology and Reiki and all the time I am offering a variety of readings, Reiki sessions, and the classes I mentioned. So I hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you, your love, your connection, your engagement are coming together in soul family and all the various opportunities we have to do that together to co-create heaven on earth aho amen namaste and so it is mahalo